with Patrick Moore, Darren Farley, this one, Celsi Bill. Turns out that a film of a book being written is only moderately fascinating. But it, it did mean that our crew was down at Farthings on the 8th of June 2004 to capture the joy of spending time with Patrick during the transit of Venus and some of the hijinks the day before. With Patrick, there was always hijinks. Um, I think we all share the belief that Patrick's true worth as the greatest educator of all time um, has yet to be fully realised. Um, and I'm going to hand you over to Sir Brian to say a little bit about Patrick, the film, and Patrick's role in history. But before I do, I also want to sincerely thank my friend, Andrew Manson, who directed the film and spent most of lockdown editing it into what it is today. So, without further ado, I give you Sir Pat, Sir, Sir Brian. <laughs> folks. Woo! Is it good to be back? Yes. Amazing, I can't believe it. It seems like it, it will never happen, that terrible lockdown stuff. It's great. I love Astrofest, as you know. I've been to very many of them. And uh, a lot of the time I was right here with Patrick, dear Sir Patrick. And um, I know some of you, uh, a lot of you know Sir Patrick and remember how what an amazing man he was. But I thought for those of you who weren't so familiar with him, perhaps the younger people here, I could give a little kind of thumbnail sketch of what this man actually was. Um, first of all, can I just say, um, can we do a big thank you to Stephen Young, who has pulled this off once again? It's amazing. <laughs> So well done, Stephen, amazing. Um, I always feel a bit humble, actually, coming and speaking out. I feel a little nervous because so many of you know so much more than I do about astronomy. And you know, this kind of imposter syndrome thing. Interestingly, um, I think Patrick had a similar kind of thing going on because he was always saying, well, actually, I'm not a professional astronomer. I'm an amateur astronomer. And um, of course, he was the most famous amateur astronomer ever. And he's the only amateur astronomer ever to be honoured by being given an FRS, uh, which is an amazing achievement, achievement. So he was a great populariser of astronomy, but also a very serious researcher. He spent thousands of hours just looking through his telescope, making notes, drawing pictures, and his very detailed map of the moon before photography was really um, able to be used properly um, was what was used by the, the first men to walk on the moon. So Patrick really has a place in history, in astronomical history. He was an extraordinary man, um, very, very unusual, incredibly generous. And uh, I wrote to him as a kid. I used to beg to be to, to be allowed to, to stay up and watch The Sky at Night. The Sky at Night on TV was the longest running show ever in the history of mankind with one presenter. He only missed one show because of a bad egg. Um, <laughs> Apart from that, he was there for every single show, and he was a legend. I think if you talk to any astronomer of our generation, and you ask them, why are you in astronomy? They'll say, because of Patrick Moore. Mm. Patrick Moore inspired us. He made us get excited about what was out there. He made us actually go out there and look at the night sky. And we all clustered around our TV sets to be told what it all meant by Sir Patrick. Um, he's the last of a breed. You're going to see in this film, you'll see him. Um, I think it's fair to say that there will never be another Patrick Moore because he knew astronomy like no one else does. He knew it in a personal way. So if you ask him, like, where's Aristarchus on the moon, he could describe how you could walk to it from somewhere else. So he, he kind of saw it all in his mind. He knew, he knew the planets like the back of his hand. Um, these days you can't do that because the, the volume of astronomy knowledge is so vast. But Patrick was one of the last people who you could ask him any question, and he would give you the answer, not by going to a book, not by going to the internet, but it didn't exist. Um, it was all in his mind. He's an extraordinary man. 
And I just wanted to tell you, he was such a generous man as well. If you wrote to him, um, you would always get an answer. So any young kid aspiring to swim <coughs> would write to him and ask him about something in the program. He would always get a personal typewritten letter from Patrick. Tapped out in his unique way with all the mistakes of his lovely old um, uh, non-electric typewriter. Um, and I was one of those people. I wrote to him as a kid and um, asked him what the, um, the introductory music to the sky the night was, the sky night was. And he wrote back personally and said, yes, it's at the console game from Pelias and Pelisand um, by Sibelius. And I rushed out and bought the music. And I think that was one of the first times that I linked astronomy and music because it gave me such a feeling. It gave me that feeling that I could see into the cosmos because of the music and because of Patrick. Uh, so what is the film? Well, we were lucky, a few of us here were lucky enough to be friends with Patrick and he became a kind of, a kind of beneficent uncle to us, I think, or a leader. I think we were all kind of disciples and we would go down to his house uh, in Selsey for various events, like a meteor shower or because we were writing a book or something, we were lucky, those of us lucky enough to, uh, to work with him. And this particular event that you're going to see now was a transit of Venus. Now, transit of Venus is not something spectacular, it's not something glorious that you can take wonderful photographs of like a photo clips of the sun or a fireball or whatever, you know. It's, it's a little black dot going across the sun, as you know. But, previous to this event, which is 2004, um, the previous one, I'll put it here, was it 1890? It, it was more than 100 women, it says here. 1882 was the previous transit of Venus, it's a rare event. So no one uh, in the world, actually, had actually seen a transit of Venus. Um, so it was quite a nice thing to, to gather together and experience, even though we knew it wasn't going to be spectacular. So we are all gathered around in his garden um, with our various telescopes, not looking through them, of course, because you, as Patrick was always the first to say, never, never, ever look through. The, the telescope at the sun or any kind of optical device. Um, so we were projecting, I had a very huge orbiting thing with a telescope that I made with my dad and, and a, a wire coat hanger holding up a piece of um, paper as you'll see. Um, and we're all thinking who's going to see this um, this venture of the black dot onto the sun first. It's quite an exciting moment. Um, you'll see what happened on that afternoon, but I think you get an extraordinary glimpse in this little clip of what it was actually like to be around Patrick and how we all benefited and how the world benefited from his unique approach uh, to bringing science to ordinary people and making it understandable. Um, the rest of it is in the film. I don't think there's anything else to say except enjoy. It's not a finished film, it's a rough cut and it's not actually ready, but we hope one day we'll go into the cinemas and, and the whole world will see what Patrick Moore is really like. But this is a sneak preview. You guys have seen this before anybody else has, has seen this footage. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Lucy, hit play. <laughs> Enjoy it, folks. Thanks for coming.